and welcome to the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm Shelley Kramer, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner here at Futurum Research. And today I am joined by Chris Hayden, former president of SAP Procurement Solutions, and more recently, a consultant and a current board member of Convergent IS. We're gonna have a conversation today talking about a super important topic, and that is procurement and how organizations can think about taking their procurement processes to the next level. So step back just for a minute. You know, procurement procurement is not in any way the sexy part of business, um, but it's an incredibly necessary one. And we find on a regular basis that outdated methods for sourcing and purchasing and managing processes can really lead to a number of challenges throughout organizations. So what can companies do to optimize these processes? That's what's on the minds of procurement professionals today. And that's why I'm so excited to have Chris as my guest. I mean, seriously, I don't think there's, you know, anybody more adept at procurement than you. So Chris, I'm so excited. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Great to be here and talking with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we get started talking about all things procurement, I would love to have a little bit of your backstory. Talk with us, if you would, about your career path and how you ended up where you are today. Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks. And it's really, really great to talk to the audience, even though digitally. Uh, yeah. Look, my, my story is, uh, you know, interesting. I'm, I'm obviously from Australia. A lot of times people will call that the deep south. I uh, spent a lot of time <laughs> in Texas. Uh, but I spent 20 plus years in, uh, you know, really cloud uh, solution delivery um, for our customers. And uh, over that time and worked with a lot of great organizations um, and a lot of great, uh, you know, employees and team members as well. Had a number of roles from um, product management, solutions management, marketing, customer success, strategy. Um, and so, you know, I've seen it all uh, in many ways uh, and certainly the evolution of the industry and the, and the changing over those last 20 years, dating myself a little bit. Uh, but yeah, and then more recently, just uh, being an advisor in the industry and a consultant, you know, it just gives me a little bit of a change from, you know, leading and being a, a part of the team um, in a pretty preeminent solution provider in the market, right, being absolutely. SAP. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. So... Let's talk a little bit about procurement. Obviously, this is a very broad subject. So, and what are the differences between, for instance, mid-market and the large enterprise market space? What are what are the differences in terms of needs and challenges? Yeah, no, it's 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 a great question, and um, you know, I, I would say th there's two ways. I mean. You know, there's the mid-market definition, kind of how, you know, large companies who really even sell into large companies uh, target. So sometimes you could argue that's more than a billion in U.S. revenue. Um, and then less than that tends to start getting in definitions of mid-market uh, companies, maybe between 250 and 750 million. So, you know, there's the scale which changes between, if you like, the enterprise and the mid-market. And then when you talk about scale, really the differentiators come to a couple of things, obviously uh, employees that you have to touch and manage, right? right. Um, the size of the spend you manage, so the leverage you can have, um, you know, in the market. And right. then last but not least really is, you know, your technology budget to be able to throw at um, business priorities, be they procurement or, you know, HR or customer acquisition, whatever they are, that's that. So I think they're the main differentiators. You see almost a step change in terms of the, you know, number of people, uh, technology budgets, and obviously the scale and leverage you can bring to the market. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. So let's focus in, if we can, for a minute on that mid-market segment. What challenges in particularly do you see mid-market organizations having as it relates to procurement? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's what I would say in general is my experience is it's probably as much about process maturity uh, and being able to then go and apply that. Now, whether that's the talent that you've got access to, I mean, you don't have the, if you're a large, very large company, you know, you might have, you know, hyper-focused, a nice good team of category managers to go and help source and do supply development. You step into the, uh, you step into the mid-market, you just don't have that depth and breadth right. 
of people and or talent to get there. And then again, it's it, it's process maturity. How can you kind of make the most of your investment with the talent you've got? And I and I think that's it. And it's like the little bit of the song. You're stuck in the middle. I mean, mid market, not in a negative way, um, but just stuck. How do you graduate up to? You know, leading practice, uh, compliance, leading practice, savings, leading practice, you know, user satisfaction um, with a third, a tenth, a quarter of the of the budget and, and, and the people uh, and the leverage. Yeah, it's like trying to do more with less, which organizations across the globe are focusing on, especially right now in challenging macroeconomic sure, times, sure. right? And, you know, the um, other thing is, sorry, just to finish yeah. off, though, but, you know, the law is the law. So, like, compliance doesn't yeah. stop uh at at the enterprise <laughs> compliance right. is like for the mid-market as well so supply chain issues delivery issues labor issues forced labor issues you know all of these really important topics don't go away um when you're a mid-market company Absolutely. in fact in some ways they're more daunting they're more daunting and um like you said they're sometimes more difficult to to address because at the enterprise level you generally have more people bigger budget better generally speaking better processes that sort of thing so those are all challenges i think that mid-market companies have um and by the way thank you for getting that song stuck in my head and i think that that's how we know that we are people of you know sort of the same generation when you can say <laughs> stuck in the middle with you and yeah. i know exactly what song you're referring to and hopefully if you are a part of our watching or listening audience there are at least a few of you who also know what we're talking about and so you're welcome for that earworm um so you mentioned procurement i mean you mentioned um compliance mm -hmm. but what other areas of procurement do you see the mid-market looking to try to get their arms around and optimizing i mean look really it's just efficiency okay. i mean i mean the 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 journey to digitization to you know rip costs out um is, is still paramount really for any organization. And again, how do you just get that efficiency so you can put your, uh, you know, less access to talent because you, your scarcity of resource, you know, for best bang for buck in, in probably the simplest way of doing it. So, you know, again, that that's that interlink perhaps between process maturity and then efficiency, AKA digitization. How do you get rid of the touches on paper-based or email-based processes. Um, it's crawl, walk, run, right? But, you know, it's surprisingly still getting out of the, cr uh, the crawl phase of paper-based or the walk, run of email-based. Right. It's still a big challenge. And that, it's, it's just a drag. It's a drag on your business. It's a drag on the internal users. And frankly, it's a drag on the accounts payable and the procurement staff trying to yeah. run the engine. Absolutely. So I think sometimes my experience in talking with mid-market organizations about procurement is that sometimes there's a feeling like, oh, you know, all this stuff sounds really great. And I buy what you're saying. Um, but this is, you know, this is beyond our um, financial capabilities. This is too sophisticated for us. This is, you know, this is something only enterprises can do. We, mm -hmm. you know, we keep, need to keep wading through, you know, our processes because we're not quite there yet. So, and I don't agree with that. Um, I think that, you know, there are solutions for mid-market and it doesn't have, those solutions don't necessarily have to be a Ferrari. In many instances, a Ford will do just fine. What do you think about that? Oh, I mean, I, look, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, yeah. look, the, look, the reality is, is and, and Ford is a metaphor, great company, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does like 95% of what you need. And frankly, yeah. look, I'm not a good enough driver to make the most out of Ferrari. I'm not but either. I'm okay enough driver for a Ford, right? Uh, look, yeah. it, 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 it's safe. It's pretty high performance uh, and pretty comfortable and, and got some great tech. And so, yeah, look, the, the, the focus has got to be on the business and getting out of the way. And yeah. again, like that, that, that approach of Ford and making the most of what you have, right? Um, and complementing what you're able to execute. Because, yeah. you know, I think you touched on a little bit too, what you can execute on and what I touched about in my driving capability, right? Um, I can't hit a corner at 100 mile an hour. And this is, goes a little bit about change management, 
right? I mean, the budget, there's the tech side, but can you affect the change and into your business? So probably not. That's the hardest thing. It's why most implementations fail mid market and or enterprise. So how do you find a solution to minimize change management? Um, because it raises, you know, the ability to get to the business case, um, through time, um, and through user impact and, um, just ROI. Right. Right. And I think that that is, I I think that's a a really smart way to, I mean, I've spent a career as a strategist and I think that, you know, when you look at this, um, you can't get, um, you can't get sort of sidetracked by all the little different pieces. I think all of this is part of, you know, a digital transformation strategy, a digital transformation journey, um, you know, and looking at, you know, what is it, what is it we're trying to accomplish? What are our end goals here? What does success look like? And then ask yourself, what technology solutions can help us get to get from where we are to where we want to be. And I think that I I would guess that you approach this much the same way. Yeah. I mean, it's outcomes first. It's, it's, it's kind of like the, the outcome economy, like the, the, the technology is great, but how do I get to my business outcome? Right. Um, Now, whether that's a services uh, blended with technology, whether that's just straight technology um, or, or anything else, that's really where the conversation's got to be. How do you drive me a differential business outcome? Yeah. Um, and in a way that's pragmatic, again, change management, you, do you have right. to change everything in your business to go and get after the first 20%? Uh, yes. Because that first 20%, it's like, you know, again, another overused metaphor, but you have this iceberg effect. In right. how do you get to these other pieces of, uh, you know, lowering the water line so you can see more of the iceberg to chip away at it. <laughs> right. And I think that's, that's why you've got to deconstruct the problem, focus on the outcomes you can get in a really quick time, but not really having to cha- change the planet right. with a massive implementation or a massive change management approach to get to where you need to be and then ready yourself to scale. I mean, just touching back on the, on the mid market. I mean, there's not, too many mid-market companies who wouldn't aspire to be an enterprise company, right? They want to grow revenue. They want to be the, whatever the next Google, Tesla, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, there's, there's that degree of you mentioned journey. Um, So how do you reading yourself to, uh, you know, future proof, scale your business uh, and be successful? Well, and I think that an important part of, um, digital transformation is understanding that there is almost never a situation where technology alone is the answer. It's people, processes, and technology, and all of those things work together. And for instance, there's many instances of, you know, uh, an organization invests in a technology solution, but struggles with changing processes or struggles with adoption throughout the organization. And all of a sudden you're looking at this huge tech investment that people aren't using. Maybe it's not the right solution. Maybe it wasn't, you know, vetted carefully enough. Maybe it requires some expertise that you don't have internally, all those sorts of things. So there, there are challenges there, but it always involves those three things, people, processes, and the right technology solutions, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. And look, you hit it on the head, adoption. Like, how do you get that adoption engine going? Yeah. In those solutions that can surround and or augment kind of what you're already doing, but move you forward. Right. uh, In a meaningful way, in a meaningful, um, you know, time where uh, we're not exactly 100 percent TikTok economy. But like if you're not getting an ROI within six months, um, you know, this question's being asked and maybe more so when, you know, when dollars and euros and and whatever are tight uh, in in an economic market and just frankly, you know, in in, in a mid market company. So. I want to circle our conversation back to procurement and I want to talk a little bit about convergent IS 
And tell us a little bit, if you would, about the company as a whole and really how Convergent Eyes is able to help this mid-market segment with their procurement challenges. Yeah. Well, let's just, yeah, let me articulate the point a little bit, right? Yeah. You have your ERP, right? And Mm -hmm. SAP, uh, you know, S4 is the preeminent ERP, whether you're the enterprise or mid-market company, Right. right? Um, and it can do a multitude of your uh, multifunctional business processes. Uh, but as you look to, you know, extend those processes uh, outside your own firewall uh, and to drive some efficiencies, you can leverage, you know, t- other technologies to really help close that loop um, while minimizing, the, if you like, the business process or the change management impact that you're already um you know, using in, in, in that system. And so, you know, Convergence does a great job of really augmenting and extending the business process, process capabilities for procurement um, in a really high ROI way. We're talking months to get you on a great digitization journey, whether it's transactional capabilities or vendor onboarding. And there's a whole heap of detail you, you'll be able to see on the, on the company page. But what I really liked about it is, is one, um, you're future proofing a little bit, one of your largest IT investments, which is your ERP. And so if you're a mid-market company, you want to scale, you want to you know, largely leverage all the greatness that you can get from something right. like SAP core ERP. Mm-hmm. But how do you ready yourself for scale? And this is a great way to get after value and procurement, you know, run that transactional uh, efficiency as, as great as you can, and then you know, be ready to scale that either with more bolt-ons or add-ons um, or some of the core functionality that exists. I think that's number one. Number two is just, you know, being close to the customer and being able to work, um, understanding your problems um, and starting at what that dimension needs to be. Lowering that change management, working on accounts payable, working on procurement, working on onboarding, working on compliance, working on services, um, whatever little area you need to go and get benefit from, that's what that's what this company can go and do. And being a you know a really prominent SAP partner, you also take away you know one of those challenges, which is IT and integration. You now, getting integration turnkey business processes running is let me tell you a really um, challenge that I've faced. I mean, just, just to punctuate the point, I'll leave everyone with a little bit of a model. I used to call it the, when you talk about integration, I used to call it the double T model, right? The, a lot of the focus is on how do I integrate this and I move this file from A to B or this XML from A to B. And that's really important because that moves the data from the firewall yours out. Right. But there's also this process integration, right? And that's where the friction can come on the onboarding process and the realization of the business processes. And Convergence Look does addresses both those double T's. Beautiful, seamless integration because it's part of the SAP platform and ecosystem. But because of that, it's also part of the process integration. So you're not talking a new language to leverage on top. You know, particularly when you're not an SAP partner or partner ecosystem, that's a little bit of a challenge that I think particularly mid-market companies probably don't understand enough um, and, and they can do. Well, I think that it, that makes perfect sense to me. Absolutely. So where, let's see, if you are a mid-market company and you are thinking about how best to solve your procurement challenges, um, I hope this conversation has been helpful and I will include in the show notes a link to find more information at at the SAP store. So you'll find all kinds of information about conversion and, you know, what the solution is and what it offers and, and why it's kind of a no brainer in my, (laughs) in my opinion. Um, But this has been a fascinating conversation, Chris. I so appreciate the time that you've spent with us today here and um, the insights that you've shared. You've been amazing. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you. Absolutely. Is there anything you want to leave our audience with one final bit of advice as they think about procurement and what to do moving forward? What's, what's the one piece of advice you want to leave them with? 
laser beam focus on time to first value. Pick a solution that you can get started on your on your uh, value realization journey as fast as possible. Because as soon as you get that, you see what you're getting, you can report it back to your business. And trust me, your your CFO, your CEO, and, and frankly, your end users will thank you. Well, and you have your proof of concept there, right? You know, I mean, when you ask for funding for a technology investment, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. The very best outcome is to be able to turn around and go, look, look what we've been able to accomplish and look at the short period of time. And so, uh, and so I think that if you want to be a, uh, rock star procurement, <laughs> a rock star procurement professional, this is a solution that you absolutely need to explore. So with that, thanks to our listening audience. Thanks again to you, Chris. It's been wonderful. And I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Great. Thank you.